Imagine losing a limb. Imagine losing your vision. Imagine losing your life all because of something you ate every single day. As a doctor, I've seen the devastating effects of uncontrolled diabetes, but sometimes my patients can't see the world through the lens of a doctor and don't believe that these devastating effects can actually happen to them. That's why I had to make this video because every day people lose their independence, their mobility, and even their lives to diabetic complications. But here's the truth. These complications are not inevitable. Diabetic complications are not your destiny. Instead, they are the result of a poison we choose to consume. This video isn't just a warning. It's your wake-up call to take back control before it's too late. But before I dive in, Tell me in the comments which diabetic complication scares you the most. So let me ask you this. Did you know that diabetes is the number one cause of traumatic amputations, is the leading cause of adult blindness, and the top reason people end up on dialysis for kidney failure? And by the way, if you're diagnosed to be on dialysis, your life expectancy is only 5 to 10 years. That's right, only 5 to 10 years. And that's not all. Uncontrolled diabetes leads to heart attacks and stroke because high blood sugar damages your arteries, making them stiff and prone to clot. Nerve damage leading to pain, numbness, infections, and ulcers, all because sugar destroys the nerves, which is why your doctor may be concerned about whether or not you have sensation in your feet. Retinopathy, when tiny blood vessels in your eyes become weak and leaky, causing blindness, which is why your doctor will refer you to the eye doctor annually to have this checked. And yes, your risk for dementia is higher, which is why some people call Alzheimer's dementia type 3 diabetes for the same reasons I just mentioned. And for many communities, especially underserved communities, these complications happen at an even higher rate. This is the reality of uncontrolled diabetes, but I don't want that to be your reality. Now let's take a look at why all of this happens. The root cause is something called glycation. Here's what happens in your body when blood sugar stays too high. Excess glucose in your bloodstream starts binding to proteins and fats. This process called glycation creates harmful molecules called advanced glycation end products, abbreviated AGEs, Think of glycation like sticky glue. It attaches to everything, your arteries, your nerves, your organs, and damages them all at the cellular level. In your arteries, glycation makes them stiff and inflamed, which leads to high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, poor leg circulation, and poor brain circulation. And yes, that poor brain circulation is why so many people end up with dementia, better known as type 3 diabetes. In your eyes and kidneys, it weakens the tiny blood vessels leading to blindness and kidney failure. In your nerves, it interrupts the signals causing pain, numbness, and even ulcers that don't heal. In fact, the nerves are so disrupted that you won't even feel the ulcer on your foot in many cases. This sticky glucose is slowly destroying your body from inside out. And it doesn't stop until you stop feeding it. Here's the thing. We have arteries and nerves everywhere in our body. That means no part of you is safe from damage if you're exposing it to excessive sugar. Your feet, your hands, your eyes, your brain, your heart, your kidneys, they all suffer. I want you to think about this. When I meet a patient with diabetes who's had an amputation, it's not just about the foot or leg they lost, it's about the emotional toll on them and their family. For some families, this is so common that it feels normal but it's not normal and it's preventable. I need you to understand this. No one was born with a deficiency of any diabetic medicine like metformin. You were not designed to live like this. Now, I'm not against using medication temporarily. If you need to use medicines as a bridge while you're making changes, that's okay. But medication should never be your long-term solution for most of us. This video is not here to scare you into thinking this is your destiny or that medicines don't play a valuable role. It's here to inspire you because the choices you make today can stop exposing your body to the poison 
and give you a future free of complications. So if you have diabetes, here's what I want you to do starting today. Number one, know your A1C. This number tells you how much sugar has been sticking to your red blood cells over the past three months. The goal is not an A1C of seven, which is recommended by some organizations, but a normal A1C of less than 5.7. And the A1C that the Board of the American Diabetes Society will be recommending will be a normal A1C. Number two, count your carbs. Not for a lifetime, but keeping your total carb number under 30 grams a daily is very helpful. This will likely help you achieve metabolic health, the metabolic health you deserve. And once you get there, you'll be on autopilot and you probably won't need to count carbs at that point. Number three, consume daily inspiration. Watch YouTube channels like Dennis Pollop's Beat Diabetes and other low-carb influencers, or even mine. Use our channels to find daily motivation to keep you on track. Number four, use a continuous glucose monitor. This gives you immediate feedback that will help you make better decisions moving forward. If insurance won't cover it, I'll share a link in the video comments to a direct-to-consumer company that you can use as your continuous glucose monitor resource. Number five, commit to learning low-carb alternatives. Find one to two new recipes every month to replace the high-carb foods you've been used to eating. This is how I was able to transition my family from a plant-based diet to a low-carb diet pattern. Number six, practice intermittent fasting. Give your body a break from constant insulin spikes by simply taking a break from eating. Number seven, walk after meals. Just 15 to 30 minutes after you've had your meal will lower your sugars naturally. Number eight, stay hydrated. Water supports your kidneys and helps flush out toxins. Number nine, avoid processed diabetic friendly foods. These are marketing gimmicks that keep you stuck, especially if you have a processed food addiction. And number 10, prioritize nutrient dense foods Eat more eggs, beef, and fatty fish to heal your body. Let's prioritize real food to achieve real health. And remember, every small step adds up. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to start. I made this video to create awareness and to empower you to make change. You are not powerless. You are not broken. And yes, you can stop consuming the poison today. So I'm curious, what will you do to fight diabetes? Let me know in the comments and make sure to share this video with someone you care about. And if you need help, subscribe to this channel. I'm here to guide you every step in the way. In fact, if you check out my link tree, I have a handout that will show you which foods to eat and which foods to avoid on a low carb diet. So check that out. Together, we can rewrite your story and your family's story, and maybe even the story of the next generations to come. I thank you for watching, and remember, you are in control.